Let's all bow in prayer to heaven. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the wonders that we see every day that are brought by your hand. We thank you as creator of the universe. You provide watch care over every single one of us and you provide our daily needs. We glorify you this day, Father, as we worship you, as we look at your word. I ask that your Holy Spirit would work in each individual who is uh, worshiping with us today. I thank you for them and for the inspiration that they will receive through the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we analyze the scriptures to see how we need to live in the day in the day that is going on right now, the struggles and the, the problems that we have to face. We thank you, Father, that you are providing on a daily basis the needs that we uh, that we have. And I thank you. We pray, Father, now that as we look at your word, that you would be glorified by what we say and do. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I welcome you to our worship service today and glad that you can share with us. I've got some exciting news. We are going to start on October 11th. Countryside Bible Church will be reopening at our building in Peculiar. And we're going to be sharing the gospel like we always do, uh, not only in person, but we're also going to continue having it online so that you can see it at a later time if you're not able to worship with us right at that time. But you see before you that Sunday school is going to be on Zoom. The time has changed a little bit. Sunday school is going to begin at 9, and you can go to tech at countryside uh, countrysidebiblechurch.org to get information on how to get into that uh, chat room in order to be part of our Bible study. And we invite you to be part of that Bible study as uh, our instructor provides wonderful information from God's Word every single week. Then following the Sunday school, there's going to be an opportunity, uh, a time around 45 minutes for us to travel to the church, and we will be having our worship service starting at 1030. It will also be streamed as uh, it has in the past, but we will be meeting in the church building itself. Uh, but we will be practicing social distancing, and uh, only certain pews are going to be allowed in order to help with that. Also, we're going to ask that you wear a mask in order to help uh, minimize the spread of the virus that has been plaguing us for so long. And uh, hand sanitizer will be available. And definitely, if you don't feel well, uh, we encourage you to uh, worship at home and not spread any illness around. But we're excited that uh, we're going to be starting, and uh, that's going to happen on October the 20th. The October the 11th. And uh, I hope that you will keep that in mind and you can go to the website to check out more information. Today we're going to talk about the greatest government of all. We're continuing a study on Colossians chapter 3 written by the Apostle Paul to the Church of Colossae. And I want to remind you as a child of God how special you are. God loves you. He has made an opportunity available to all of mankind that they can have eternal life. Because the kingdom of God is coming. Jesus is going to restore, uh, he's going to set up a kingdom on the earth. And he's eventually, after a thousand year reign, of bringing everything uh, into submission this earth is going to be renewed. It's going to be the paradise that God originally wanted it to be. Salvation is available for everyone. We are called, but we have a choice because we have free will. 
I want you to, uh, we're going to turn into the book of Colossians for our scripture text. Colossians chapter 3, we're going to read verses 12 through 17. We talked about th last week things that we need to take off as far as habits, uh, you might say clothing that doesn't fit, and uh, we need to, things we need to get rid of. Today we're going to look at verses 12 through 17 of things we need to do. Because, you know, when you start a habit, uh, try to get rid of a bad habit, you need to replace it with a good one. So we're going to start with Colossians chapter 3, start at verse 12. So, those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. But beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you, with all wisdom and teaching, and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. As I mentioned at the beginning, where each of us are called, we have free will. We have the opportunity to choose Jesus Christ. Back in the Garden of Eden, the perfect individual, Adam, was, was, was sinless, but he had free will. He had the opportunity to make a choice. And God said, you have all the fruits of the, all the trees of the garden at your disposal, but the one in the middle, you should not eat. If you do, you'll die. They made a choice. Adam and Eve made the choice. They chose to disobey Today, we have the same choice to obey or disobey. God's word has not changed. God does not change. God does not lie. The scriptures tell us how to live. And we have the opportunity to follow the scriptures and do what, and follow the guidelines that are in the scriptures for our own good, for our betterment, because God knows what's best for us. Or we have the opportunity to choose to go our own way. Salvation is available to everyone. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 14 says that many are called, but few are chosen. Salvation is open to everybody. God does not want anyone to perish. So everyone has been called. The opportunity is out there, available for every single person. But few are chosen. There was, there was a TV series back in the 1960s called Mission Impossible. And in this TV show, for this series, an individual who had a job to do, they said, this is going to be your mission if you choose to accept it. And that was one of the keys. This is your mission if you choose to accept it. And that's how we are. God has a mission. We're called, but if we choose to accept it, then we're chosen. Free will makes us a unique individual because the uniqueness, we are, because of the free will, unique from any other uh, creature or part of God's creation. Those people who are called, serve, and obey. Our calling is for everyday life. We had talked about last week about the things that we need to, we need to get rid of. It was from uh, chapter 3 and verse uh, starting with verse 5. We need to get rid of impurities and evil desires and greed. Uh, all those things amount to idolatry and 
We also need to put aside anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive speech. We shouldn't lie to one another and lay aside the old and the, the evil practices that we used to do. Paul tells the church of Colossae, he tells those people, you used to do those, but you're different now because you've come out of the world. You're part, you're living in the world, but not you're not of the world. Because you have been raised up with Christ. You're a changed individual. Second Corinthians 5:17, you're a new creature. Old things are gone. Old new things have come. We're new, we're dead, we're unique, but we still have the ability to sin. So we need to work at our salvation on a daily basis. So when we're going to get rid of those old habits that we spoke about last week, we need to put on something new. We, you know, when you try to get rid of a habit, it's been said it takes maybe three weeks to get rid of an old habit when you do it uh, and you work on it routinely. You need to replace it with something else. And so the things that we're going to replace, we took off the old things that are not Christ-like. Now we're going to put on some new things. Now, in verse 12, Paul uses the, the first, his first word is so. It's similar to the first word in uh, chapter 5, which is therefore. Because of all this, here's now what you're going to do. So he mentions uh, we need to, uh, we are uh, renewed in Christ. There's no distinction between Greek, Jew, Sir, uh, uh, circumcised or uncircumcised in Christ is all in all. So, as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on heart of compassion. Because you have now in Christ, here's what you need to put on. Here's your new clothing. Here's your new wardrobe. Put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. These are part of it. Uh, we're going to bear with one another, forgive each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. This is our new wardrobe. It's a strategy for everyday living. We are a chosen people. We're beloved. God cares for us. We need to acquire these new characteristics. We need to have a, we need to have a heart of compassion loving people because the way God loves them we need to look at them as God sees them from the innermost parts of our being we need to be sincere in Romans 12 Paul says let love be without hypocrisy our love should not just be a surface love we need to have God's love for people. It comes from deep within. You know, when somebody uh, tells you they're sorry, you know, uh, something has gone wrong or they have done something against you, and they say, sorry, it doesn't sound very sincere, but when they say, I am, I am so sorry, the, the, the heartfelt regret because of what they have done, uh, it, com it comes deep with from within. That is a heartfelt compassion. We need to have kindness. Going the extra mile. We need to have uh, humility. And that's sometimes hard. It doesn't mean that we can't accept a, uh, a pat on the back. A couple of attaboys, if you will. But we need to have humility. Not having a, pride, a, a, a proud spirit. We need to be gentle. Meek. That doesn't mean mealy mouth. We need, you know, stand up for what is right. Jesus stood up for what was true. Jesus stood up for what was right. And when he went into the temple and overturned uh, the tables for the money changers, he was angry and he had a right to be. We need to be patient. We're not a patient people. 
We want things right now. But God's timing is different. God's ways are different from our ways. And we want the same, we want Jesus to return. We want the kingdom to be set up. The apostles, right before Jesus ascended, asked Jesus, will you now at this time restore the kingdom in Israel? They thought he would do it right then. And he said, it's not for you to know. I've got other things for you to do. And he gave him his mission. We want Jesus to come now. We see around us the struggles that our country is in. We see the, uh, the turmoil and the hate. And we would like Jesus to return because we'd like almighty in intervention into this world. God will send Jesus when God is ready. We'd like it right now. But God is waiting. He's patient, not willing that any should perish. And we need to forgive one another. But we need to forgive as God forgives. And part of that is understanding a struggle from someone else's point of view. Look at it from their side. Walk a mile in their shoes, if you will. Forgiving one another the same way that God forgives us. In verse 14, we find he said, beyond all these things, this is the greatest of all the garments. Put on the perfect bond of unity. It's love. Put on love, which is the, the it's love, which is overall the greatest of the gifts. Paul told the church of Corinth, uh, at the end of chapter 13, there's three characteristics that abide. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of those is love. We need to love people like God loves them. It's a hard type of love because we sometimes have ill feelings toward individuals or we have um, preconditions in our mind of the way a person looks or what they do, our mind says they're like this and I don't go along with that idea. They have a different lifestyle. They have different wants or desires. They look different. They smell different. They believe different. We need to love them anyway where they are and let the love of Christ shine through us. Love holds us together. Verse 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another with psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Now I look at this uh, passage and look, uh, think about our worship. You know, worship, when we come and share on a weekly basis, a lot of people are missing out on what God wants for them. Because here, you know, when we, when we share, everyone comes to the service. Back then in that Jesus day, in the days of the apostles, Everyone came to their meeting as they met from house to house. And somebody had something to share. And it might be a psalm. It might be a hymn. It might be a, a, an impromptu uh, thought of thankfulness. Today we have the situation where you have a preacher up front and the people in the pew. And it's a one-way thing rather than having a sharing of good news to find out what did God do in your life this week? How has he changed your life? And what answered prayers can you, have you experienced this particular week? The peace of God. Let, let love be an umpire in your heart. It guides, it instructs, and it rules. We need to be like Christ. 
even in times of irritation and annoyance, when things don't go right, we need to think, if Jesus were here right now, if he was with me on this mission, or if he was in the car with me in this situation, if he was in school with me right now, sitting in class with me, if Jesus was at the grocery store with me, helping me shop, if uh, Jesus were in the workplace and he's working right next to me, the things you say, the things you do, the things you think about, would they be the same if he was right there? Back a number of years ago, there was a bracelet people wore, uh, kind of a stretch band bracelet. It had WWJD standing for, what would Jesus do? And we need to think about what we would do if Jesus were here. If Jesus came to your house, as the, the poem that uh, Porter Wagner once talked about, if Jesus came to your house, to spend some time with you, what would you do? Whatever you do in word or deed is Paul's final thought in this section. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Whatever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks. Don't complain. God has richly blessed us. Some of the struggles we have, we don't understand them. But give thanks for what we have because God's going to richly bless when we honor him and ask him to help us. So whatever we do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God our Father. Amen.